Welcome guys to part 7 of building our uh, signal generator part 7. Uh, as you can see uh, I put uh, the wires in. Uh, I uh, show you now uh, the detector and, uh, and the valve that uh, the signal is coming in. So, uh, uh, so far so good. We have had some uh, uh, trial. I had some trials already. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do that with you because I have to investigate uh, certain things so uh, uh, to make sure that it is working. Anyway, this uh, little valve was blazing away as a transmitter, so uh, <laughs> so I had to put a, a cap onto it, to the, literally. Yeah. And I didn't try it from there. I didn't try it anymore. Like, Yes, put a, a, a wire into the antenna socket of that receiver. Uh, I, I did know this, will go, this, this was going to blaze away as, as a fire. So, uh, uh, blazing away, yeah. So, uh, I check on the 3.0 uh, megahertz at one band. So, I put them on, uh, I could hear uh, the tone as well. Uh, but uh, if we have also some stability issues, uh, well, that's easily to come by. Though uh, I have to do some work on this side still, so I can't really put uh, something in like this. But that's, that would solve the problem, you see. And <laughs> this, this other thing is dropping out. Doesn't matter. So uh, I have to uh, finish this side first, okay, before we can on that side. Another point is uh, I can't put the transformer here or even there, so that's it is not possible. So I have to make a construction up and then put the uh, transformer down there somewhere. So I have to uh, make that transformer still, so uh, I will show you that as well. So anyway guys, I'll uh, put something in, in there like this. Uh, that will uh, screen also the high frequency, so the RLF will screen that as well. So. Uh, I have to box it in anyway, so uh, otherwise the thing won't work at all. So uh, it's just uh, it's just a wild transmitter then. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, I did have a trial already, and um, oh yeah, um, I will uh, do that together with you. So, but I will improve on that first, and I'll show you uh, how it works then. You see, this valve uh, is radiating a lot of RF. So I had to put a, uh, a screen over the top. So I attached it, so the, the, the frequency was changing also. So uh, that is well, noticeable on the, on the radio. So we have to screen this, absolutely. Because if you have to have a, a screen in there as well. There. Because that side, this side, and that side has to be separated anyway. So otherwise our... Uh, Detector will pick up that signal. We don't want that, so we put that in here like that. So we solder that down. This, yes, that uh, improves the stability as well. So it will be go up there, here. We do that, so we have that. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to do that first uh, to get the stability back. We screen this already, and then we. Uh, Built the stability apart, so we have a connection to uh, from the, the dip section from uh, the screen grid. We have to have an, uh, a connection there. So, what I will do is put one of those uh, supports in there, like this. There, I will uh, get a 150 picofarad capacitor onto the screen grid, mounted on that one. And via an uh, a coaxial cable, I go back up to this compartment, so it will be screened, so it won't radiate anything, so it won't, it won't uh, influence anything. So the signal goes out there, and then we leave it, so that I have to figure out uh, the best way to do uh, how to do the connection to our dipper. Uh, 150 picofarad is quite heavy on uh, the part of, uh, oh, let's say, uh, uh, under uh, 7 megahertz. 
that's where we have a coupling so uh, above seven megahertz uh, we uh, no I say that but one the wrong way around um, we don't need much coupling for up to seven megahertz because the signal is that big so we have to say uh, about five or six picofarad I have to show still that this is what it is it has a show still so I could what I could do is uh, get two capacitors say five picofarad and 150 so you have two coaxial cables going out there just have to mark one down but it's the 150 and then I have to figure out how I'm going to do this we have to have 150 and 5 picofarad on the dipper as well so that will be in the BNC uh, plug there is a BNC plug I'll show you there has to be, have to have another one there next to it so we have the BNC plug here we have to put another BNC plug on this side so to say for instance this will be 100 picofarad and that will be 5 picofarad why? because an oscillator puts out quite a uh, high signal and this will uh, influence our dipper and the smaller the signal is on the dipper the more accurate the, the, the signal will be the dip will be so if you have a strong signal the dipper will be not, not so as accurate as it is in a small signal so when we have a big signal we have to reduce it to a small signal and then our dipper will show that clearly much more accurately than uh, it is a, a strong signal okay so you see I've had it on, on a modulation that works and this works a lot I have my uh, potentiometer loose I've noticed that now and on and see if that works works out that well I have to go a bit back this way that's minimum so I will tighten this up a bit so there we go and now it won't move anymore it won't move anymore so I had to max max that out out of this here the tone but there we again guys if you don't uh, go straight from the from the dip of uh, uh, the uh, coaxial cable to the to the antenna plug uh, you won't hear that tone for quite a, so so well so uh, that is my experience with the other one as well anyway guys uh, as you can see we are making progress uh, it's going to be a long haul anyway so to get there but we will get there I'm considering to make a coaxial cable of that one as well now yeah, well, there's a feeling I have uh, that would be good enough we have to have a decoupling capacitor between that so to make sure no RF goes through to through to uh, our uh, power supply um, yeah uh, there is one there already but there again uh, yeah, it should be okay but but to make sure to make it absolutely sure we should uh, see it with the oscilloscope so you can see if uh, there are if it's there or not so uh, well, we're just going to leave it at that so anyway guys uh, so I have to figure out some things out I will uh, do that and I will come back to you okay you guys you can see uh, I reinforced the bottom so uh, we get that jimmy out of there so uh, that is uh, that worked quite well with some, some materials which what they use in uh, transformers so uh, that's very thick and it's very sturdy so I uh, reverted it down in the bottom so uh, and you can see on the side I've also uh, put some board on there so to get it a uh, perpendicular yeah and uh, yeah you get a bit more solid so now we you have uh, um, a solid uh, frame so we have to put one on this side as well so we have to, to cut that out so it goes up to the front like that and it goes down to the bottom and at the same time we have then uh, the separation from uh, see like that so we have the separation so, uh, like that we have to have the separation so we put it like that up to here and then we uh, those two uh, can't see each other and they won't influence each other so on the other hand is uh, we get more the frame will be uh, more sturdy uh, 
uh, more more uh, resilient to uh, deform. So uh, anyway, uh, well, so far so good. Uh, we carry on, so we uh, cover that up as well a bit. So this is very weak, but then again, there's only the the intention is to keep it uh, perpendicular and and here to give it a bit more. Uh, body get to this firm so it doesn't move around so we will do that on this side as well and we have that then on that side as well well nothing can go wrong let's show you something else so uh, last time I went uh, for my uh, my cords I uh, bought this uh, beautiful board yeah, see that and uh, we put that on there on the outside we made the, the cabinet with that, so we'll make that that well. So we have to uh, cut that all out and we'll uh, solder them together. And then we drill, we'll have to make something like that here, like this, so we can drill holes to it and we uh, can solder the, the little nuts, copper nuts, on there so we have uh, something to get to screw the bolts into. So we automatically we have then uh, a uh, connection point for uh, the case around it, okay? So that's what is, is the intention. Anyway guys, uh, so far so good, I will carry on and come back to you, okay? Okay guys, so you can see the front of uh, the general generator. I see I put in another BNC on there, a double one, I told you that. Uh, there should be one of uh, 100 picofile, one from 5. This one is 100, this is 5. So I uh, had to make some arrangements of first of all. Uh, to get everything on, so uh, had all connected things all up as it should, and put another. Uh, can you see it? With my fingers, yeah. Uh, put another uh, little coil on there uh, because I put one extra on the other one, on, the, on that one. Put one and extra one on that. So uh, I had to uh, do that on the same thing on that one. So, uh, so I proceeded to uh, connect everything up so far as, as it goes. So we had our meter uh, partly connected. So we have here our power, that is our main feed. Yeah, and we have here the connection from our oscillator that goes down here as well. So uh, we have to see how strong this signal is what is in here. So uh, that's the other thing we have to do. We have another dust. That's the advantage of uh, uh, with, with it, sort of flex to uh, flex everything off and whatever, whatever. So we get all the dust from all, all everywhere. So the only thing we have to do now is get, connect this little print up here, what I made here. So I uh, put that up here, like that. You can see I made a separate static separation from anode and, 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 and grid because uh, there's no feedback. So we put that up here, and our transformer, that's, that's the plan, anyway, the plan will be, the, the transformer will be up here, it's down there, because there is no room on the bottom, it's as simple as that. So uh, another point is he's out of the way, so he doesn't cause any harm or anything like that. So we have to uh, make this a bit uh, better, I have some ideas about that, so I can use some metal to do that, some uh, aluminum. Uh, see what I can do. It's, it's been uh, soldered down quite nicely here on three points, and I soldered uh, this one on the bottom here on two points and there. So, so you have the uh, the opportunity when you have to uh, repair something. But hopefully it won't happen. There we go. You, you never know in the future, perhaps. Then you can get those uh, things quite easily off. So you get that you can get to it. Anyway guys, uh, that's so far so good, uh, we have to put that in here, like that, and uh, yeah, this will be uh, the, the detector and this will be uh, the separation valve for, uh, so we put it up here, something like that, so, so we have no influence from the back, so there is no, uh, no possibility that uh, the, the coil, uh, L, uh, uh, the LC uh, can uh, work back on uh, on on the on the valve. So we, we don't want that. So anyway, guys, so far so good, and uh, that's uh, the way we have to proceed. Uh, we have to get our, uh, our uh, filaments in order still. So uh, 
I think I've connected them up here somewhere to see what I'll put on there or there, whatever. And do what we have to do, get our uh, meter connected up, our meter will come up from here to there. So, uh, uh, some other things I've uh, just uh, playing in my head to see uh, if I can get away with it. I don't think I will get away with it. So, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, no matter. We will see, okay, and uh, we make it as sturdy as possible. Uh, we have to put our transformers, so we have to make that sturdy. Uh, there's, well, there's always a certain weight to it, so it is not that heavy. But there again, if you have on the top here, you can, see, oh, you can see here already that it is moving around a little bit. So we have to do see uh, how we do that. So it won't be any trouble, I think. Um, yeah, I will see. See, I'm thinking about having another uh, panel down here. And uh, connect that panel up with that panel. Um, uh, I don't think it will uh, make any difference though. Um, yeah. I think it's a piece of metal or something like that to, to, uh, to, st to stabilize it a bit. So we we'll have to see we can do something around here. I don't know. <sighs> I really don't. Uh, I have to think about that guys. Uh, anyway guys, we get to get into the point of uh, testing this uh, thing properly. So, uh, first of all, what I want to know is uh, how much signal is coming off here. Because we are divided the signal here in 5 picofarad and 100 picofarad. I uh, uh, measure that uh, with capacitance meter up to seven, uh, 43 picofarads. So there's about the impedance we won't have on here. So, um, We'll see what, 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 what gives. Uh, there's always uh, room to put another capacitor there, so uh, no matter, uh, we, 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 uh, we manage, we cut it off if, if it comes to, we cut that cable off a little bit and before we solder it down, so that should be okay. Okay guys, uh, you can see it is coming along nicer. Yeah, and we have to uh, get the transformer hey? we know now uh, it is 180 volts so we have to uh, the square root of uh, 180 volts we have to see how much that is let's have a look on the calculator I can do that on, uh, on paper we have uh, 180 square root 13 volts 13 and a half volts so if you, have, if you make a transformer of the 18, 180 volts here and you don't rectify that and then the 13 and a half volts we get added to it so we are say 195 volts then you have uh, to see how much the uh, current is flowing um, so you uh, go be, uh, below 180 volts so that should be okay so uh, what will that be probably 4k, 10k, I don't know, depending on the current that's flowing. So uh, that's all I have to tell you for the moment. So uh, I will shut the camera down and uh, come back to you, okay? Okay, everybody, you can see I uh, made some progress here. Uh, the detector <laughs> is nearly in place. <coughs> you see this? Let's check this out still. And there has to be one connection has to be made up to the grid here from at this point with the same uh, coaxial cable. Yeah, and then we just we are in the position of start uh, testing. So then we have our uh, signal generator and our dipper uh, ready. You see how we uh, reinforce that dipper. I'll put something uh, like this across here, Hold on. like that, so that will be a bit, bit wider than that it is, is that it gets me a bit more stability. And then I have the opportunity when I put the case on to the bell holes in here, two points, and then uh, secure it with bolts so that uh, it is more secure on the, on the back side, so that will be alright. 
so you can see uh, we've done our job uh, and that's that one cable has to go here down there this cable has to go on there as well but have to see well how much signals come out of there and then uh, yeah let's have a look if we've done more uh, I think we can test them then I suppose and uh, we'll see you see I screen that off as well so uh, there's no uh, no way the, the signal can uh, feed back on uh, onto the valve so uh, that's the intention uh, as you can see our uh, uh, signal generator zipper is nearly ready so what the next thing we have to do then is uh, to find out uh, where this the frequencies are at, so uh, we have minimum maximum frequency, so I need that to, to mark that down. I have to make that uh, on the computer, on both sides, it's the same. So uh, we have to do that. And then we have to uh, calibrate our scale per uh, frequency band. So uh, there's a lot of job, that's a lot of work, it's quite a, quite a big job actually. So uh, we have to see to that. So uh, I think we chaps, uh, I will uh, start up a new video to, uh, to get uh, all the testing done. Um, yeah, I think I will do that. I want to finish this, uh, this video here. Uh, otherwise this video gets too long also. Uh, so we have to, to make our transformer still. So we have to make that stuff. Well, we'll do that in in between. So uh, so we have to uh, uh, not to uh, use our power supply anymore. So well, for the for the time being, I will use that. So I have to do some testing and so on and so on. So you will be part of that when we do the testing. Um, when we uh, get the receiver on the bench. Then the whole lot will be uh, will be covered up. So uh, we're not that far off though. We can think it's one video and I think we're there. So uh, anyway, guys, I will uh, finish the video here, and I'll see you back on the next part. Okay. Okay, everybody. So my uh, film is not that long yet, so uh, I kind of add a few minutes to it. Uh, in front of you see our. Uh, the signal generator. I did a, had a hell of a job. Uh, I had them, took them apart again and I checked my coils uh, so many times. Uh, there is so much uh, self capacitance, spark capacitance and whatever whatever in there. So uh, all what you uh, 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 how you call that uh, calculate doesn't uh, get there because of uh, so much capacitance is in there so anyway guys I managed to uh, to get it uh, fairly okay here and there is a gap but uh, it's not on the uh, on uh, on a point where, the, where it matters so uh, we have the high frequency bands uh, the, the, the 20, the 40, the 80, uh, the 15, the 16, the 21, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, I tried to cover them all. Uh, I'm going to show you now <coughs> what, uh, what I've done. I can just uh, show you a few. Uh, he will tell you what it will be. Uh, the lowest frequency is 357 kilohertz, and the highest frequency is... Uh, 31 megahertz, 202. Okay, I will uh, get uh, the counter in, in, uh, in, in vision and then you can see for yourself. Okay, hold on. Alright, uh, there we are. So I uh, start up the power supply. I have to warm up a little bit. So, uh, anyway, uh, I put the voltage on. And then we uh, have a look at uh, what he's doing. Okay, we are at the lowest band, I think. Yeah, the lowest band. And I will go up uh, 
the lava, as, as it were. So I'll put them on. 358, so you can see it is all working. Yeah, I'll take the, uh, the next one. It's all working. See, it is a stable. See how stable that is. One up. 15. That's an 80 meter band, nearly. One up. That is the 80 meter band. You can see that. Yep, we're still up. That is a 40 meter band. That's where I get there. Yep, there we go. I see it goes up. Go on up more. 12. That's a 20 meter band. One up. You see it's on the highest here. 31 megahertz. What is important, uh, gentlemen, that this is uh, that it is stable. You see, uh, this is wiggling a bit. Doesn't matter. See, if you put them on the frequency, you should stay there. There you go. Very important that he stays on that frequency. You see how stable he is? That's the advantage of uh, uh, getting an oscillator between two grids. He won't uh, budge for uh, voltage changes or whatever. So uh, he just stays where he is and uh, it doesn't really matter where he you go. He, where he is, he says. He, he says, yeah, look, stable. Just stable. Another one. Also stable. You see, it doesn't move. She said it's the 160 meters. This. Uh, can I get there? I, no, I don't get to the bottom. Oh, I have to go down that way. I think. If I get there, if I get there. Yeah. Yeah, I get to yeah, I get I get the 160 meter band here. Yeah. So you see that works as well. Uh, part of the broadcast band also. How it gets 1200. Ah. So we see we missed that piece of the broadcast band. So uh, and that because of uh, uh, our coil. He goes down to. Uh, have a look. What did I say? Three or three hundred or something. You see, if we go past the twenty, uh, one down. There we go. And then we have four fifty-five uh, IF frequency. There we go. The only thing we have to do now is to mark it down on our. Uh, on a scale, we won't do that on uh, on on the on the apparatus itself. I won't. I wouldn't be able to get uh, eight uh, bands on there. So it just just won't work. So I don't know. I will uh, get the camera back to uh, the signal signal generator. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we are. Well. I had a trial on our uh, dipper and I'm uh, happy to inform you that uh, the dipper works. Well, uh, shut down the, the voltage and uh, get the power supply off. So see if we get the voltage off the power supply. There we go. That should do. So, and get on, see what I've done. Get the first set those leads off, guys. Uh, See what the next thing to do is to get that transformer. That's the next thing we have to do. So uh, that's uh, is on the menu this week. So uh, we get that done. Okay, Mr. Wood. Let's turn this thing around. Now it's not uh, 
all songs and praise. I can tell you that straight away. Uh, firstly, uh, we have to uh, change our coils here. We have to do that. Then we have to check uh, our socket here. That probably has a malfunction. If that is the case, you have to replace it. So I have no, I have enough of stock, so it won't be a problem. Uh, but I have to tell you more about this. This lead, uh, I told you that is what goes on uh, on our uh, uh, grid dipper. Um, but I have to tell you more then. Um, what was it? Oh yeah. Uh, well, as you know, and uh, I showed you in the, in the video. Uh, Every frequency uh, has its amplitude. You see a sine wave, or if, uh, if you picture a sine wave, um, yeah, I'll, I'll draw one for you. Hold on, where is my pen? Oh, yeah. a sine wave. So you can see that, hopefully, um, the sine wave. Oh, a box up there. You can see it. I will uh, darken this a bit, otherwise it is overexposed. There you go. You see that sine wave? Okay, that this point and that point is amplitude. Yeah? Okay. Now then, um, every frequency has this amplitude. The lower the frequency, the, 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 the bigger that amplitude is, in voltage that is, in negative and positive. So for instance it could be one volt uh, on, on the scope and it will be a number of, uh, how you call that, uh, anyway, um, sections uh, that will give you the voltage uh, top top. And, um, you can imagine if you have a high frequency that the uh, amplitude will be much much smaller than uh, um, as at a lower frequency. If you uh, go back in the video you can see that clearly. I showed you. So what you have to do next is when we have the screen grid that is actually the grid what, is, what controls the valve itself. So if you uh, have a normal voltage on there of 160 volts, that valve will give you uh, a maximum performance. See, if you lower the, the, the voltage on that screen grid, then the performance will drop. So the, the, consequently uh, the current through the anode will drop dramatically. So what you have to do then is you have to look at the output on the, uh, on the anode on the coil or whatever on the uh, capacitor on the, on the steering grid from uh, the EC92. You put pull uh, the EC92 and put the scope on there and then you uh, see what amplitude your uh, highest frequency has and then you have to uh, use resistors to uh, drop down the voltage so that the amplitude stays approximately, I say approximately, it's the same. So that means also that we have no uh, 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 oscillations in the, in the system. So I noticed this already when I started it up, it works and it dips quite nicely. Uh, but uh, when the amp amplitude gets too large or too big, then we get that feedback and it starts to oscillate. So there's only one way to get rid of that, and I just told you that. Just using resistors to reduce the voltage on the screen grid, and the performance of the valve will go, go down, and you uh, have the same amplitude on every frequency you uh, have you put on there. So you have to make sure of that. So there is a variable also when you turn the tuning capacitor for the dip. Then also you will have a change of amplitude, of course. If the frequency goes lower, it gets up, and if it gets higher, it goes down. Okay. Anyway, guys, that is what I want to tell you. Um, um, mainly, mainly, mainly what we have to do here 
is to uh, per well, extend this uh, screening here a bit so we have no uh, feedback on there. You have put one here already but it's not, it's not sufficient. So I have to put one up here see if we can get past that. So you have to see and then otherwise I move this a bit forward and then uh, put a, a solder one up here to the little tail there. So. But if, I think if we have uh, I'm going to do this uh, resistors on here. It will be a job. I will, I, can, I admit that, it will be a job. But there again, you feed them on one side, on the highest frequency, that's the, uh, the side you want to feed this thing on. Yeah, get the voltage on. And then, apart from all the. the, the uh, can you see that? Now we need a light. Where's my light? Boop, boop. Oh, did I put my light? Oh, guys. I got it. I lost it again. Where is he? Nah. I have another one. Okay. See, there are those uh, coils are in here. So you have to separate them. You have to put the pliers in between or get them out for a minute and uh, uh, fit uh, the resistors in between. So we have the feedback, the feeding or um, the voltage on the top, on the highest frequency. Yeah. You can uh, see your amplitude on uh, this valve. Yeah, from this valve. And then we have to uh, manufacture uh, that so, uh, or the resistance is that way, that uh, the amplitude stays the same. I'm not saying this is easy. It's not easy. So that uh, will take some time. That's what we're going to do in the next video. So uh, I will inform you about that. And then uh, we're going to test our, uh, our dipper. I did test them already. Guys, he works. And he works well. Um, okay. Just before to put that thing off. Anyway. Uh, so guys, uh, I'm going to conclude this video. Uh, as you can see we're making progress and we are near the end. The next thing well, I have to do guys is uh, to go and I did write them all down. I did write them all down so uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, to get that all in order on the computer. Get that in. So that's why I did uh, notice them now. Uh, note them down. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then I will uh, get my scale in order. That's quite a large job because there are eight positions on this thing, so there's quite a bit, but quite a big thing to do. So I start off 20, 19, 20, up to 75. So I will uh, notice all that uh, down on on a piece of paper on the computer, like I've done uh, on the frequency counter. And uh, set, the frequency, set the frequencies all on there. So if you then turn uh, your knob and you put on 30 ones, it's that on a certain uh, thing of the band, you will uh, uh, find your frequency. So, uh, so it's uh, just as easy. And then we have on this side, we have the same, of course, uh, the same uh, scale or numbering. Uh, you have the advantage because you have 150 picofarads of, uh, of tuning capacity and so that goes much much lower. But it's not important though, it's just to give you an idea which what frequency you are. That's that's all. If it goes lower or higher, higher it won't go, it will, all, it will go lower than that. So but that doesn't matter. So that, that doesn't matter. So if we can use our dip function, that's okay. Um, our meter, for instance, will uh, reflect up to, say, nearly 70. And when he is in resonance, he will drop down to um, what's that, what's that, 13, maybe 13, something like that. So uh, that's what, 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 what it does. And it does on all the frequencies, so uh, it doesn't for the detector, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the current will stay the same, okay? Okay guys, I'll shut them down and uh, I'll see you on the next video, alright?